Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron, and in this week's episode of Tuesday Tech Talks, Norman from AV Room Service walks us through reverb. How does reverb play a part in our listening rooms? And this episode is awesome. Enjoy the show. Comments down below. Hi, I'm Norman Varney with AV Room Service. Welcome to another segment of Tuesday Tech Talks. Last segment, we talked about, we did a crash course on noise control because before you can talk about sound quality, you have to have the noise under control, right? This segment, we're going to do a crash course on re room reverberation. Reverberation is probably the most recognizable characteristic, acoustical characteristic of the room next to bass response. So what is reverberation? It is the sound from your loudspeaker, in our instance, um, reflecting all over the room. So, for example, the loudspeaker goes directly to your ear, but it also goes to the floor and bounces to your ear, and then to the side wall, and then the rear wall, and the other side wall, and the ceiling, and the back wall, and those are just first order reflections from one single speaker uncontrolled, then they go on to do second order and third order and fourth and on and on until there's thousands of reflections. And mainly what you're hearing then is reverberation. You're hearing your room more than you are hearing the, the direct sound um, through the air to your ear. Um, so is reverberation friend or foe? Well, in a performance venue, it would be friend. In this chart, we can see that, uh, um, especially back in medieval times, when all they had was stone to work with, and they had organ and chants, and because of the fact that the, the large, cavernous, rock stone buildings um, did not bode well for anything that was percussive or staccato or transient of, by any means, but was beautiful for organ and chants, things with long sustaining notes that then supported it and added to it and made it richer and fuller and, and, and gorgeous. Um, as time went on, you can see that uh, as different types of music and, and even instruments were invented, that the venues had to change. Here we show different venues that are available in our times. And there's, you know, for all kinds of different music and all kinds of different purposes. And uh, in, in ours, we want tight control of the, the reverberation times because we don't want to hear the recorded reverberation venue mixed in with ours or even ours covering it up, masking it. Um, so we want to have control over it. We want our room to sonically disappear and just hear what was recorded. So in our instance of playback venue, reverberation is faux. And the reason being is that it affects so much. It will affect, uh, it will smear spatial cues. It will limit the dynamic range because it will mask it. Um, it will smear tonality. You won't be able to hear attacks um, and, and small and texture. Um, low level details, low level resolution, those, those will be covered up and, and masked. And articulation, uh, especially for example, uh, speech, art well, and bass re articulation too, but speech intelligibility just goes down. Um, for example, in, in this, this is our acoustics lab um, where the reverberation times are, are totally under control and, and linear. The, way back, it used to be in a, um, a venue that was designed for speech and, um, and they began to address it uh, with absorption and understood how to do so and so forth. They used a vocalist with uh, particular words and they would have uh, people listening and they would write down what words they were hearing. And then it was a matter of what words did they get right? What was the percentage that they got right? And that was essentially their uh, speech transmission index. Today, um, that's done with a, a, a signal that is much more accurate and much more repeatable and consistent and with test instruments rather than picked up subjectively by, uh, uh, by listeners. So it's, it's very quick to do and, and speech intelligib intelligibility index is still very important, very key. And I run that too when I'm doing uh, uh, cinemas, for example. Um, 
So for example, favorite words uh, as an example would be um, bat, bad, bath, bass, ban, um, back. Now in this environment, in the, the lab, those are very easy to understand, at least I hope they are. Um, now I'm going to say them again and with the one and a half second reverberation time, which is pretty typical in, um, in a residence that doesn't have acoustic treatment in it. Bat, bad, back, bass, ban, bath. So let's talk about what's going on when I say the word bat. So this is showing uh, the word bat over time. And you can see as it starts, it's bat starts out loud, but the T is softer. And if we've got a reverberation time of one and a half seconds, the reverberation time, the room, just covers it. The T is, is, is masked. It's, that consonant is gone because of the reverberation tail. So when we get the room under control, the T is revealed. The consonant is now unveiled. And, uh, and articulation is, is now uh, reachable, obtainable. In chart five, you see this is way back years ago. I thought it would be interesting to compile the average of 50 different rooms that I had done acoustic treatment in before treatment. So this is the average. This chart is showing the average reverberation time of uh, 50 typical residential rooms before treatment. So pretty unique graph or signature or reverberation curve there. This is the construction of what reverberation is. So we we get the signal begin and it builds up and, and fills the room. Then you've got a bit of a, a steady state there where the room is filled with sound and then the signal stops. That is your decay. And in uh, typical reverberation times, they're done with a, um, uh, an air pistol or a cap gun or a balloon. And it is uh, amplitude over time. Going to chart seven in the lower half, you can see a typical reverberation uh, test. Um, so this is amplitude over time. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information here. And like I say, it's just going to give you say about 500 hertz, you know, the, what the response is at 500 hertz or 1,000 hertz. For a playback venue, we've got to know more information than that. So the, the test that, that I do there is frequency over time. And in the upper chart of chart seven, you'll see that. So now we can understand uh, what reverberation times need to be addressed either with more absorption or less absorption if, there, if there's too much. Um, we need to know what kind of, a, of, of treatment and quantity needs to be changed so that we get, as in chart seven, uh, a more linear, neutral, natural reverberation time, um, or rather times. So at different frequencies, as you can see in chart eight, they, and as you probably understand, um, higher frequencies are much easier to absorb because they're less energy and um, shorter wavelengths and so the materials can can capture them easier. And so in this chart you can see that the, um, the high frequency decay is quicker than say um, the any any of the lower frequencies. And the lower the frequency again the harder it is to to control. So reverberation time also varies from position to position in the room. And in chart nine, you can see that uh, uh, on the upper chart, this is, um, again, another um, listening room, a dedicated space, this one, with just carpet and furnishings in it. And you can see it's very irregular. Again, this one's time over uh, frequency. Point with this one, though, is I recorded this at nine different listening positions. And you can see that it varies depending on where you are in the room. Then after our uh, frequency response panel system was installed, in the lower graph you can see those exact same nine positions now under control with, uh, um, with reverberation, with absorption treatment. So in, in future segments, we will address how to 
control reverberation with the, the right type of treatment at the right locations and at the right quantities. Until then, I thought it would be fun to end with a, a video montage of the sound of my voice in various rooms. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This is the sound of my voice in the family room. This is the sound of my voice in my closet. This is the sound of my voice in my shower. This is the sound of my voice in the kitchen. This is the sound of my voice at two meters in a fully anechoic sound chamber. This is the sound of my voice in the reverberation chamber at about two meters. The idea with the reverberation chamber is to have all the sound waves reflecting at the same intensity in all directions at all locations. As you can hear with the reverberation in the reverberation chamber, articulation can be a problem. Low level details can be masked. And so, <laughs> so close.